Hey guys, Chrissy here. Um, since I've had my quiet time this morning, I've had something on my heart and my mind that has just been sitting there. And so I felt I really had to just come and talk through it. Uh, it's an encouragement for somebody. I really felt somebody needed to hear this. And um, I'm just really believing and hoping and praying that it's going to speak to you about where you are, the situation that you're in and where you're going. And like I said, just ultimately be an encouragement to you. But I kept thinking about seasons. Seasons kept coming to my mind uh, throughout the day. And I just had the sense that there's people, many, many people out there, many of you who may be listening, who are in seasons right now that they're trying to escape from. And so really what I want to talk about is, or what I want to encourage you to do, is to not try and escape the season that you're in. I've written down a few notes and a, a few things about the different seasons that we can find ourselves in, but very often we find ourselves in a season and it may be a difficult season, it, may be a, it might be a confusing season that you're in and your, your natural reaction is to try and escape and run away from that season. Uh, I just want to read from Ecclesiastes, this is a very well known scripture. In Ecclesiastes 3, it says, There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven. Then it talks about a time to give birth, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to search, a time to give up searching, a time to keep, a time to throw away. So you, you really get the, the picture in Ecclesiastes that God works in seasons. And I promise you, in your life, you're going to have different seasons. And those seasons are placed there by God. Some of them are exciting, wonderful seasons, but some of them are, are very challenging. And I want to talk about the different seasons that we experience. But my encouragement to you really is this. Don't try and escape the season. The season is there for a reason. And God is trying to build and establish something in that season inside of you. And very often in our discomfort, we try and escape the season and we delay the process. Um, Israel is a very good example of that. They were in a season where they were moving from one place out of Egypt to another place into the promised land. And because of the discomfort, the 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 stress that went with it the confusion that they may have felt um the fact that they didn't have their own homes but they were moving around all the time made them very uncomfortable and resulted in them doing certain things that delayed them into getting into their promise now ultimately all your seasons are building up for you to get into that promised season and that promised land i'm not talking about your salvation your salvation if you accept christ if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is lord you are saved i'm not talking about your salvation i'm talking about that sanctif sanctifying work that jesus is doing in your life through the holy spirit where he is molding you and shaping you and bringing you to new better places and he's working on your character all the time. He is building inside of you constantly. And those things are going to produce beautiful things at the end of the day, even though it's extremely uncomfortable at the time. Um, so I understand that there is that temptation to try and run away from the season or do whatever you can to get out of the season. But my challenge and my encouragement to you today is to not is trying to escape from the season, but I want you to try and embrace the season as difficult as it is, as you know, sometimes that's just a very difficult thing to do and it feels impossible. And I know all about trying to escape seasons. I've been in seasons where I've tried everything in my, up, in my own personal power to escape, um, didn't work at all, but I understand that temptation and that discomfort that you can be in and makes you wanna run away from that season. But let me start talking about the encouragement before I talk about the different seasons we can find ourselves in. You know, in Ecclesiastes 3, it talks about these different seasons that we will have in our lives. Just like there's natural seasons, we're going to have seasons in our lives. And then it says in verse 11 that he makes everything beautiful in its time. And I believe that's the final climax of your, of your seasons. And sometimes you will have beautiful seasons. Sometimes they're not going to be so so um, comfortable, <laughs> so enjoyable, 
but ultimately you want to move into that promised season and you want to get to that stage where God really makes something beautiful out of your life and he is leading you there and he is guiding you there so I want to encourage you not to give up in the season as difficult as the season is it's building something amazing inside of you and the outcome of that is going to be something more than you can ever you could ever dream or imagine it's just going to be so much better than what you could perceive with your own natural mind it's going to be so so much better okay but some seasons that we can find ourselves in we can find ourselves in a birthing season i mean very much when you accept jesus and you start a new journey with him that's a new birth that you experience it's a birthing season that's very often a very exciting season because you discovering your relationship with god you are um you're just so excited about the things and the works of god and that's such a, such a good season to be in then you have growing seasons you have dry seasons where it just feels like even your relationship with god can feel difficult and dry you can have dark seasons you know it's like you're almost just putting one foot in front of the other and you're just trying to make it through the day. It just feels very dark. Everything seems heavy and difficult and oppressive. Prison seasons. Now, a dark season and a prison season are actually different. A prison season can also be dark, but a prison season is a season that you're in that you just cannot get out of yourself. There's actually nothing you can do. It can be a financial prison. Um, it could be a relationship prison. Um, you literally cannot do anything. Joseph was in that kind of a prison. He was in a physical prison. And that represents a lot of the um, the seasons. If you look at Joseph, his life represents a lot of the seasons that we can also encounter before we get into the promised season um, and into our promised land. There are seasons where you may lose everything. I went into a season, I had a wonderful job, I had a car, I had a beautiful apartment, I had everything, I had a beautiful life, to be honest. And then I went into a season that God called me into. We think that those seasons are not from God. God calls you into those seasons where I went from having so much to literally having two bags of clothes and living like that for a very long period of time and moving from place to place. And I went from having everything to having nothing. Now, was that season, was it um, enjoyable? It was not. Was it comfortable? It was not. Did I want to get out of it? I tried everything to get out of it, but it was a prison season. It was a, a season that God called me into. And if I overthought it, I probably would have <laughs> driven myself mad and crazy. But what I had to do was I had to walk in it every single day. Um, and so now that I'm kind of out of that season, I'm moving out of that season, I can see how much that season has built in my life and what it's done. And I can see the value of that season. My whole perception about everything has changed. My perception about God, my perception about finances, my perception about everything is literally completely different to what it was before I went into that season. I did not enjoy that season, but I'm grateful for that season. I'm sure Joseph would not want to go back to prison, but I'm sure what he learned in that, in that season, in that prison, what it built into him, I'm sure he was grateful for that. And we can see he understood the process that he had to go through, because when he spoke to his brothers, he said, this is something that God has done. So he understood the, the season. That's why I want you to understand, because if you can understand where you are and what God is doing, it will help you to embrace the season that you are in. And I want you to know the wonderful thing about seasons, even though some of them can feel so long, it's a season, so it has to come to an end. Okay, so these seasons cannot last forever. That's the encouragement. And the season will last for as long as it's needed to build, it, to build what needs to be built inside of you. That's what you must understand. That is why fighting against it, trying to take things into your own hands, trying to have control over the season is quite futile because um, all you probably end up doing is prolonging it. But if you embrace the season, and there's nothing wrong with, with saying that this is a difficult season, it is a difficult season. But if you embrace the season and you understand that that season will only last as long as it needs to last to build what it needs to build inside of you and if you also understand that you're not alone in that season that the holy spirit that god is going to give you grace for every single day 
These difficult seasons, you can only do one day at a time. You cannot plan, you cannot try and forward think, you cannot try and influence and control. You have to do it with God every single day. Otherwise, you're just going to make it a lot more difficult for yourself than it needs to be. Okay, but whether you're in a dark season, whether you're in a prison season, don't try and escape the season. You could be in a roller coaster season. Have you ever been in a roller coaster season? I remember I had a time in my life where I went from one thing and like literally in two months, my job status changed, my relationship status changed. A few months later, my the country that I was living in changed. And a lot of it was good, but I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. And every time I just want to catch my breath, something else happens and I just can't catch my breath. And so you also will have those seasons in your life. You know, when God is bringing about a lot of change, he often does a lot of it at once and it can feel very, very overwhelming. Um, but my challenge to you today is don't try and just escape your season. Try and embrace your season. Okay. And tap into the grace that you have for the season because God never expected you to do the season alone and part of the reason you are struggling so much with your season is you are not spending more time with him you know when you're going through a difficult season you can't just go through what you you can't just go through the motions like you do usually it has to look different your time with God needs to increase. If you want to get through a difficult season, your time needs to increase with God. If you're doing 15 minutes every day, it's probably not going to suffice. What you probably need to do is increase that time with God and really take the, the time and focus to, to get into a time of prayer and focus with God so you can really get that strength you need for every single day. Uh, when I go into a difficult season, I automatically start fasting regularly. I fast once a week when I'm in a difficult season because it helps me get through the season. And so what we can do, and I know that I'm speaking to somebody here when I'm, when I'm saying this because I know that the Holy Spirit is leading me in saying this. What we can do is we can try and find forms of escapism from the season. So because we don't process the emotions and we're trying to escape the season so badly, we try and find forms of escapism, for example, it could be drinking, it could be binge watching, anything to just try and escape the reality that you're in. And, you know, sometimes that's okay just to like take a break from reality and get lost in a book or a movie or something. But sometimes we are not processing the emotions that we are experiencing with that season. Sometimes we just need to have a good cry. Sometimes we need to have just let it out. I'll give you an example. I went through a difficult season once and Whenever the emotions were trying to come up, I would eat. Eating can mask emotions. I would have like a pig out um, and it would just kind of make me feel better. And so I did this for almost a year. I gained so much weight, it's mad. Um, but it just helped me not deal with my emotions. And then the next year, God told me, clearly, I was so upset. He said, I want you to do a Daniel fast. And oh my gosh, if you've ever done a Daniel fast, it's super, super difficult. But I did a Daniel fast for 21 days and sorry, there's some kids in the hall screaming. I'm not sure if it's coming through. I did this Daniel fast for 21 days and because I'd spent a year like just dealing with my emotions and suppressing them through food, I couldn't do that on the Daniel fast. Like you can literally have vegetables and some very, you can't even have caffeine. So there's Nothing I could have done to suppress the emotions. And I probably, and it was very weird, it felt very weird that I was going through this. Likely I was staying alone at the time because I was kind of all over the place at that time. Um, I literally think I cried for 21 days. I think I cried every day because I had to work through all of the emotion that was like just sitting there that was undealt with. And when I came out of that Daniel fast, what happened was that I didn't need to eat like that anymore. Um, my eating changed completely because I dealt with the emotion that I was experiencing. Um, and so when you are in a difficult season, you need to embrace it. Um, you need to tap into the grace of God for it. And that means more time with God, more time in the word, more sermons, more fasting. You need to use the tools that are available to you to help you in that season. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible. And um, then another thing is you need to stop trying to escape it not just escape it physically, like trying to get out of the situation, but stop trying to escape it using food or binge watching 
or drinking or whatever it is, those kind of escapism methods that we, we try and use to escape our reality. But process it. Process the pain of that season, take it to God. That season and that pain is building something amazing inside of you. You don't expect when you go to the gym, it's just going to be a walk in the park. There's sweating and pushing and pain and stiffness. There's all of the stuff that goes that happens when you start working your body. I know when, I, when I'm unfit and I start getting fit, I have, I'm, have extreme tiredness for like two or three weeks at least, you know. But that pain and that pressure that I'm putting on my body is doing something. It's changing things. And just like that happens with your physical body when you do it, the pain and the pressure of the season that you're in is doing something, is doing something amazing. And you usually can't see it in the season. You only see it much later. But what I want you to do is to trust God that he's building something wonderful in your life, that he's not going to destroy you in the season. He's going to carry you through the season and it's going to result in some beautiful blessings and it's taking you to places that are beautiful. He wants to place you in the promise and plan that he has for your life. And sometimes we don't like the route, we don't like the journey, but the journey is there for a reason. And as we embrace that, as we stop trying to escape it, whether it's from escaping it from the physical perspective, trying to get out of the situation, or just trying to escape our day-to-day reality through binging or whatever it is, you know, instead of doing that, process, process what's happening. Take it to God, spend time with him. Your power and your strength for the season is with him. And very often because of the stress of the season, what happens is we spend less time with him. Uh, we focus less on that and we, we try and focus on, oh, let me try and get out of this. Let me do this. Let me, you know, just we try and we have so many coping me- mechanisms that actually take us away from God. But that's when you need to be closest to God. And probably you will find that as you do that, um, you probably also stop delaying the season. So I don't know who that's for. Um, The last thing I want to say is when you're in a difficult season, whether it's a dry season, whether it's a prison season, whether it's, um, you know, a dark season, whatever season you are in, you will never lack. For example, I, I, I really love using this example. I love drinking green tea. Green tea is just one of my favorite drinks in the world. I know people think I'm crazy. People hate green tea. There's this one meme that's going around. Like if you want to really like ruin your morning, you just start it with green tea. <laughs> so you can just take the joy, any joy you might have left for the day. But green tea actually brings me a lot of joy. I love green tea. I drink a lot of it. I like good quality green tea. And so I remember when I was in this uh, like kind of prison season that I like to call it, I was... Um, I I ran out of green tea and um, I just remember that I was staying with people because I just stayed with a lot of different people at that time and I didn't even realize that I I had completely run out. I I think I thought like I had another bike somewhere or whatever it is and it's not a big deal Um, but if I wake up in the morning and I can't have green tea it kind of upsets kind of upsets me to be honest like coffee and green tea they both need to be there in the mornings. So I remember that I woke up and um, I went downstairs and I was like, oh, I don't have uh, I don't have any green tea left. And I remember a delivery came and the, the delivery was made by the person that I was staying with, a food delivery. And um, the, the, the lady who was kind of cleaning the house, she took the groceries and she unpacked it. And she was like, oh, they sent the wrong tea. <laughs> they sent green tea instead of normal tea. And um, I remember just being like, ah, oh, like literally two minutes ago, I was talking about how I've run out of green tea. And uh, the lady that I was staying with, she, she just started laughing and she's like, you know what? I don't believe, I believe it might have been a mistake from the grocery, like for, from the, the delivery perspective, but I don't actually think it was a mistake. I actually think that God just made sure that you had your green tea. And you know what? In that moment, I realized that's exactly what happened. And it may seem silly, it may seem stupid. But I remember just feeling so encouraged that the, the, even those little things that were important to me um, during that time, God made sure that I had it. I never lacked a single good thing. Um, I didn't have much. I, I hardly had anything. But the things that, even the small things that I enjoyed, God made sure that I had it. Um, another example, last example, I remember there's a certain skincare brand that I like 
super expensive um really like something you buy as like you know just like as a special occasion or to treat yourself now and then but I remember having a conversation with a girl just saying, you know, the way I'm living now, not having a proper job, just being all over the place. Because we were talking about different skincare brands. I'm like, I'm, I'll, I won't be able to have that for the next couple of years. But you know, one day when I'm on my feet, I'll, I'll definitely treat myself to that. And the very next day, it's like God hears these conversations. The very next day, I met a friend for, for something. And she had bought me a whole, like, like I don't know what you want to call it, like a it's like a basket or a gift bag just full of these things, products from this brand. Um, I remember just feeling overwhelmed saying yesterday, I was just saying like the season that I'm in, I'll, I'd never be able to have this stuff. But it's like God was just saying all the time, you're in the season, those small things that are important to you, I know that they are important to you and I'm going to provide for you. And the whole point of these two stories is like, even though you're in a difficult season or it may seem like you don't have enough or you won't have enough, just be encouraged. You will never lack a good, any good thing when you're in the will of God. You may not have much, but those things that you need, he will make sure that you get them. He's not going to let you down. He's going to make sure that you get them. He's going to take care of you. Stop trying to take care of yourself all the time. You don't need to take care of yourself. If you're in the will of God, he will take care of you. Um, we so focus on all of that stuff, but actually... God is going to take care of you. And if you're going to spend more time with him and really focus in on him, you are going to have access to that peace, that joy, that grace, every good thing you need, no matter how dark and impossible the season is, when you embrace the season in the right way, you will walk through it with confidence and courage. It may be stretching, it may be difficult, it may be hard, but you're going to come out of that season. And I want to encourage you again, with Ecclesiastes 3.11, he makes everything beautiful in its time. You're walking towards something beautiful. Don't be like the Israelites. Don't delay it. Don't delay it by 40 years. Walk towards it. Embrace it. And I promise you will never, ever, ever regret it. Okay, so that's my encouragement to you. It's supposed to be five minutes. It's like now 22 minutes or <laughs> something ridiculous. But I hope it spoke to somebody uh, I really uh, pray for you in this season. I pray God's going to bless you. He's going to keep you. Remember, all things are possible through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. And God has got something so much bigger for you. Don't lose sight of that because of the season. Keep your eyes on Him. You're going to get through this. I hope this helps somebody. God bless you. And I'll chat to you soon. Bye.